In this one-on-one -on -one interview with Jason Upton, he shares how we can connect to the Father's heart through worship. He gives wisdom to up-and-coming worship leaders how we are to make our goal of worshiping as an active follower of Jesus Christ. Take a look now as it has this inspiring conversation that's going to bless your heart about worship. Take a look. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. This interview now with Rags yes. to Riches, at Rags to Riches. Rags to Riches Ministries, yes. Father's Signature Event. Mm -hmm. We had the opportunity to um, get an interview with Jason Upton and just, just sit back and talk. Mm -hmm. And uh, we really enjoyed our time together. We could have even went longer, but out of courtesy for Jason, he was so friendly right. and so willing to share so yeah. much. Uh, we said, all right, Jason, that's enough. That's enough. Now, I want you to watch and be blessed. Hey Jason, we're excited to have you here in Pensacola once again. I know you've been here before. Uh, talk to us about the Father's Signature and why this is important. You get invitations to go many places. Why was it important for you to come to this event here uh, today? Well, in particular, when anybody asks me to come and share a particular on the heart of the Father, understanding, you know, that Jesus comes to show us what, what God looks like. Yeah. And so it's... Whenever I get an opportunity to share on that, it's all, it's an easy... That's an easy thing? Yeah, yeah, it's easy to know. Oh, this is a place I belong, you know? I'm glad to have you. I wanted to ask you to share a little bit about the Father's Heart and some of the things that the Lord has shown you. I know in your music, a lot of times you express of the Father's Heart and how we're to relate to Him. Talk to us just a little bit about that and why that's important. Yeah, well, I mean, Jesus shows us the Father's Heart, and so... The life that Jesus lives, he doesn't just live, um, in particular, like just starting with Jesus shows us how to be human and to be fully human is to be connected with earth and connected with the Father's heart at the same time. The desires of the Father, the longings of the Father, to have both of those going on at the same time is what it means to be fully human. It isn't fully human just to be connected to this world. Yeah. And it isn't fully human to just be connected to the spiritual realm. It's it's fully human to, to know the Father and to know that He knows our name, to be connected that way, and then to be connected with humanity. Yeah. Jesus shows us how to do that. So that's first is that is that this relationship that Jesus has with his Father is a relationship he longs for all of humanity to have with the Father. That's beautiful. Yeah. I love how the Lord uses you in, in the gifting of worship and music. I feel like many times through your songs and the different times I've, I've seen you lead worship that it's almost an invitation for us to join you in that worship to the Father. Yeah. Talk to us, how important is it as a worship leader? Today, many, there's many worship leaders, and I believe there's a powerful move of God on the horizon, and we're going to need many of them. Mm -hmm. But what's the heart of the worship leader as opposed to performance? And Can you speak to that a little bit? I mean, yeah, I mean, entertainment is to detain people from entry. So what I'm always doing is trying to invite people. Yeah. Um, and you're not inviting people um, to do more. You're inviting people to put themselves in a place of receiving, you know, what the Father's giving in the moment. Um, and so, so that's the whole point of everything I do with worship is 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 inviting people into the presence, the real presence of God, not just His presence, like His presence, um, but His how present he is to us in our in, in, in every moment of our lives. Yeah. And so, um, you know, what happens a lot of times when we call things revival or moves or these things that happen it is, is when both are present at the same time. Hmm. When you have God present and we're present and we're interacting with one another, this is a powerful, you know, dynamic. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. Talk to us about, you know, we have access and, and there's churches and connect, connections and that watch our program. 
what type of wisdom would you share with future worship leaders that wanting to begin to, to move in worship and I know there's many things that you can say, but what do you think is like fundamental? If you could say one thing to, to an up and coming person that, that feels like, you know, God's called me to worship, what's your heart of wisdom for them? In, in if I had one thing to say, I would, I would say that expression puts a cap on worship. So when we make worship just the expression, well, you're capping it. And every once in a while, somebody will come through and break through that rooftop we've put on it, right? Yeah. But when we make the activity of worship, like really, Jesus didn't say much about singing to him, but he said a lot about following him. So when we make the activity of following Jesus, if that's the goal of worship, well, that's going to transform worship. And it's those fingers go forever, so you, you can't... You know, you, you, when you put a cap on expression, when you make it about expression, you know, you, you put a cap on it. Yeah. There's an end to it. When you make activity the focus of worship, there's no end to the expression. It just keeps going and going. It's beautiful. But if I had one thing to say to worship leaders, it would be, don't make the expression the end goal. Because the expressions are going to change. They change every 10 years. So, and, and, and what happens is you end up telling people something that's not true, and that's that this expression is worship. Wow, that's wow. That is never worship. This is worship. Sometimes the expression leads to activity. But Jesus said a lot about following him. He didn't say a lot about singing to him. So forms and ways in which we sing to God are not nearly as important to God as the activity. And when the activity of worship is is happening the expression is endless we can we can recite poems we can recite scripture we can there's so many ways that we can worship god when the activity wow. is present among it's beautiful people. i know that you're a songwriter and i know that you you know seek the lord talk to us about that process how does the lord give you worship songs how, where does that come from yeah i mean i do a lot of study i spend a lot of time with you know, reading writers and reading the scriptures and a lot of practicing of what I read, not only theology, history, things like that, but poets and then off, you know, also obviously the words of Jesus and trying to practice that. So, um, you know, when I, when I write music, it often comes out of just a life lived trying to follow Jesus and I just, I write poems out of that and then it ends up being music. In hearing the voice of God, it generally starts with, you know, the, high, the idea of let there be light is, I, you know, I often will get an unction or a sense of something before I have language for it. Mm, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So a lot of what I write on is, is Jesus, see people say Jesus speaks to you. Yeah, he speaks to me, but he very rarely uses words. Mm, yeah. In fact, I don't ever know if he ever has used words, but he's still speaking. Some say, does he speak in English? No, he never speaks in English. It's, it's what, he, what happens is he begins to speak at 5.30 in the morning or 5 o'clock in the afternoon, and it may take me 6 hours or 10 days or 30 days or 40 days to, to, put, to put words to everything that he's saying. C.S. Lewis said it um, in the, you know, Voyage of the Down Trot, he says, and, and Aslan said, but I'm not sure he spoke. Mm. It's the same kind of concept. And um, so, so what happens is, let there be light is, let there be illumination and let there be understanding of everything that God is doing and everything that God is saying. Wow, that's good. So, so often the way he speaks to me isn't, hey, Jason, this is what I want you to do. It's more... I have a sense and I know in my spirit what's being said even in the instant moment that he's speaking to me, but I don't have language for it. I haven't figured out it. And so writing is the way in which, writing poetry is the way in which I sort of put language to what it is that I'm hearing. 
Wow, that's beautiful. What's what's one thing that probably many that the Lord is sharing with you now? But what do you what do you think? What is God saying for this hour to you, for the church, and maybe even for the world? What what's on the Father's heart? Jesus, this is I sense that I've always sensed this, but I feel like you know Jesus is on the Father's heart. You know when Jesus was on the you know Mount of Transfiguration with the disciples, for instance. I mean we're I don't necessarily know that there's anyone that's more famous than Jesus is. But Jesus, when he was on the Mount of Transfiguration with the disciples, when, when God spoke to those disciples, he didn't say, this is my beloved son, go make him famous. He said, this is my beloved son, listen to him. And I feel like on the Father's heart right now for the church is, will you trust the way of Jesus. Is the way of Jesus the way that leads to real life? Or or are, have we taken on the Peter's way? Or Judas' way? Or Herod's way? Or, yeah. There's the way of Jesus, and then there's many other ways. And that, that's, that's, the, that's the, next, the next season of time, I think, is a time where the church gets to either decide we're going to choose to follow the Jesus way or we're going to follow another way that may work yeah. um, in the temporary very well but I think in the end we're going to we're going to finally come to terms with his way is the way that leads to life and peace and resurrection joy and uh, the fulfillment of making all things new and his kingdom come Amen. Amen. Yeah, so any any current projects that you're working on? At the yeah, moment? I'm working on a couple projects. I'm working on a table full of strangers, which is uh, songs and following Jesus. So I have volume one coming out next month. So I'm really excited about that. And where that. can we get that at? Uh, probably uh, through the website on iTunes, you know, various places. And know. the website is? JasonUpton.com. Okay, great. Yeah. And we can follow you on Facebook. And Absolutely. All Facebook, social media. Twitter, yeah, all this uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, everything. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you've joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfntv.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless.